today we're going to be taking over Inter Milan. The team that made it to the Champions League final is now is having to sell some of their best players to do to poor ownership. Right now Inter Milan is in deep financial trouble having one of the biggest debts in soccer history and is in one of the poorest leads the Serie A who's struggling themselves. So that's why today we're going to be taking over Inter Milan but with a twist. We number one have to make a profit from all player transfers. You know that budget that you did at the beginning of the season? Ours always has to be higher than that. And number two, we have to only do it in three seasons. So let's get started. As always, let's start with the team. I mean, it's a great team, but there's going to be a lot of people leaving. Maybe Bastoni, Skriniar, Brozovic, and Barella might all be leaving. I don't think you're going to be reaching the Champions League final again. But let's see what happens, and let's find some people. First of all, we are going to finish off for Malu Lukaku's and Francesco Acerbi's loan deals. It's in the air if Lukaku will join Inter Milan due to transfer fees and, let's be honest, a questionable season. <laughs> but we are going to sign Francesco Acerbi also. He's already confirmed in real life, so why not? And after transfer listing some really club legends, we did receive an offer for Lotaro Martinez and Alessandro Bastoni. We will not be selling Alessandro Bastoni or Barella, just because they look set that they're actually going to stay this year. But we are going to accept an offer for Lotaro Martinez due to some interest in Marcus Thurman. So, but we tanned it up to $121 million, so let's try and do that. And so we are going to go after Marcus Thurman. Um, he has a contract expiring, and Lazio is going after him. And since we sold Lotaro Martinez, we do need another striker, so let's sign Marcus Thurman. And the next player out on the list is going to be Edin Dzeko. Uh, in real life, he is going to Fernabache, but in this game, he's going to be going to FC Barcelona for about $12.5 million. Now, I think our net sign is going to be for Tessie from Sassuolo. Uh, he's going to cost us about $30 million, but he's been linked heavily with Inter Milan in real life and a quality midfielder, so let's sign him. And well, it is an interesting offer from West Ham, but we are going to sell Milan Strenier to West Ham. And we ended up to about $78 million, so let's try and do that. And they accept $75 million. And we have received an offer from Marcelo Brozovic from Real Madrid for about $42 million. Let's see if we can raise that a little bit. And they accept $52.5 million. So our next sign is going to be Jan Sommer from Bayern Munich. We signed him for about $20 million, and he is their backup keeper. Inter Milan is uh, really heavily interested in Trubin from Shakhtar Dantesk. But, let's be honest here. If you put a 72-rated goalkeeper in your team in FIFA in the Serie A, you're going to be seeing this piece of paper in no time. I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. I was enjoying the relegation battle. I was actually, I was actually enjoying it. And we really don't want that to happen. So we're going to sign Ian Sommer from Bayern Munich. And they accept $22.5 million. And I mean, you know, thinking about it, Inter Milan and I have actually a rich history with, well, old goalkeepers. You know, I mean, Handanovic, one of their best keepers. I mean, he's about 37 years old now. So that makes it even more realistic. They were interested in people like Hugo Lloris and other people. So I think this is a pretty realistic signing. So, if you are above the age of about 37, I'm not trying to call you old, just in soccer terms and professional soccer terms, you might be a little bit past your prime. Alright, I think about our final signing will be Frank Kessie from Barcelona. He's then cost us about 50 million, which is pretty expensive, but I think we are able to splash the cash on him. So, he has actually been linked in real life, so let's try and sign Frank Kessie. Alright, and we do sign Frank Kessie for about $60 million. Hopefully, Inter Milan don't have to pay that in real life. Oh my goodness, first game in. This is going to be a long ride. And after this kind of crazy summer for a broke team, uh, we're going to be ending it here. <laughs> And so, after spending $191.3 million, we did actually end up making a profit margin of about $60 million, with us selling about $253.2 million. Listen, I've gotten like three offers for Samir Handanovic. 
I need to sell Onana, not Handanovich. And well, it is the final hour of the transfer window, and it looks like Andre Onana will not be leaving Inter Milan. So, sadly, he's going to be sitting on the reserves the entire season. <laughs> so, this is our Champions League group. I wasn't able to change it since, well, the new Champions League groups haven't come out yet. So, it's a very tough group, so let's see if we make it out alive. Alright, so, I'm scared about our Champions League group. And it's not looking so hot in the Serie A either. We're about 10 points off of the title. So let's see the Champions League group. I'm a little scared about this one. We didn't make it out. We had we only had one win, and that was over Barcelona. We had three draws. Oh my goodness. So we are gonna be facing Dynamo Kiev in the preliminary round of the Europa League. I actually forgot to show you, so this is the team in January. A great team, actually. Turam has gone up two. Uh, Bastoni's went up a few. A Serbi's gone down. But no, it is a great team. So, let's keep on going until the end of the season. So, we are in the uh, EA Sports Super Cup. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but anyways, it is against AC Milan. So, let's see how we do. We are at the Stadion Olympic. And a 3-0 win. A 3-0 thrashing against AC Milan. Oh, and funny story. Uh, it's February 1st. And Andre Onana has it sold. Also, we are in the Copa Italia semifinals against Napoli. So, we could win a trophy in our first season. A 3-2 victory in the first leg. Also, in the first leg, we do have Lazio in the Europa League. So, let's see how we do against them. It is just the round of 16. A 1-1 draw at home. Alright, so second leg against Napoli. So let's see how we do against them. It is away. It is a 2-0 win though. Lukaku misses a penalty. But still is alright. Just Tessie stores twice. <gasps> it's, a, it's, a, it's an Andre and not a transfer offer. I don't know who back at is. But it's an Andre and not a transfer. I mean, it's in the middle of like March or something. But we got an Andre and not a transfer request. No, they rejected it. I offered like 45 million and they thought it was too much. Anyways, we do have Sevilla in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. The Europa League Kings, who won in real life. So let's see how we do against them. In the quarterfinals, a 2 0 victory away. Okay, we did actually get another Andre and Hanna transfer. <laughs> And they set $45 million. Alright, so second leg against Sevilla at the San Siro. Let's see how we do. Okay, it is a 1-2 loss, but we're still through to the Europa League semifinals. Also, I just wanted to show how good our team is. There are about like 5 or 6 people, actually 6 people, that have 10 goals. I mean, Marcus Turman has 16 and 10 assists. This is crazy. Lukaku with 23 goals? Our team's doing great. I'd love to sign Robert Gossens or Gossens, but he, it looks like he's actually going to Bournemouth in real life. So, sadly, we can't sign him, but our team's doing great. This is the screen I've wanted to see for a very long time. Also, second leg against Napoli in the Coppa Italia. Also, so let's see how we do. 2-3 on aggregate for us. And a 2-0 victory to bring us to the Coppa Italia final. Also, in the semifinals against Ajax, we do have them in the semifinals. And is at home for the first leg in San Siro. So let's see how we do. A 1-0 loss. Alright, so second leg against Ajax at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Let's see how we do. Is 1-0 aggregate uh, against us, actually. So let's see how we do. It is a 0-0 draw, meaning we are out of Europa League to Ajax. And they'll be facing Real Sociedad in the final. Alright, so it is the Copa Italia final, and I think it's only fair if we watch it. Alright, so it is time for the Copa Italia final. Uh, for some reason, it's not the San Siro, it's at the El Libertador. But, you know, who cares, right? We have all these big names. So let's go. It is time to start the Copa Italia. To the name as AC Milan at the fourth minute. Krunic then passes it to Nali. 
with it, maybe pass it down the line. No, he passes it back to Brahim Diaz. Steady as a rock, but they shoot. But Yan Samer gets it. Uh, and Yan Samer gets it and kicks it out right to Tenali, but then Inter Milan get it. So Inter Milan maybe with the first chance, or with their first chance. Oh, pass it to Romelu Lukaku, going down the line, goes into the middle, and shoots. But Mike Maiden then gets out and jumps real high and... You know, it ends up not being a chance. But look at that replay. Mike Maynan doesn't get a hand on it, actually. Goes back to Gerard Moreno, I'm pretty sure. Rafael Leal shoots. But it's blocked by DeVridge. But Rafael Leal still has it to Theo Hernandez. But is back to the Inter Milan defense. AC Milan with another chance. Pass it to Gerard Moreno. Back to Krunic. Moreno. Tenali. Pass it to Salamakers. Always offside. Not by much at all, though. Maybe an Inter Milan chance, Romelu Lukaku. Oh, maybe pass it to Dumfries, but he doesn't make it there in time. AC Milan chance, back to Brahim Diaz. Pass it to Salamakers. Oh, Salamakers, going down the ring. I'm sorry if I just butchered your name. Uh, he's maybe crossing the middle. Goes to uh, Sergi Roberto. Oh, but Salamakers offside again. Maybe an Inter Milan chance, DeMarco. Pass it to Marcus Thurman. Uh, Lukaku, back to Marcus Turman. Uh, Barella, Turman. Uh, we're passing it back and forth here. Uh, Marcus Turman. Okay, he's offside. He's offside. Never mind. <laughs> oh, not by much, though, at all. Maybe he didn't go down the wing to Tio. No, he passed it all the way to Gerard Moreno. Uh, back to Tio Hernandez, to Rafael Liao. Tio going down the wing, but no, it's Inter Milan. Oh, but no bad passing. Uh, this is kind of real hectic here, but uh, Inter Milan get the ball eventually. Uh, Lukaku, but it's a bad pass, but Inter Milan get it again. Marcus Turman, pass it to Romelu Lukaku, who's uh, against like three defenders, but Marcus Turman goes down, he's in the middle, and he shoots, but oh, but oh, Mike Maiden saves it. We we're so close to the first goal of the game there. So corner for Inter Milan, uh, short pass. Crosses in the middle, but it's blocked. But back to Nicolo Barella. Marcus German. Uh, pass it to Romelu Lukaku, who shoots, but misses. That was a close, almost goal. Oh, look how close that was there. Very close. Oh, uh, long ball to Dumfries. Pass it to Barella. Oh, but a through ball gets caught by the AC Milan defense. And that is half time. So... It's been an interesting game. It's kind of been a little bit even though, so not a bad game so far. So this is the halftime stats. 0.7 expected goals for Inter, 0.2 for Milan. So not a bad half. So AC Milan are kidding us off to start the second half. Who is tied going back to Tonali? Oh, but Inter Milan did a counterattack here. Made for Romelu Lukaku, who's going down the wing. Pass it to, oh, Marcus Turman, but it's caught. That was a close one there. Sandro Tonali passes to Rafael Liao. Back to Tonali. Gerard Moreno passes to Brahim Diaz. In the middle to uh, Moreno, but gets caught by Inter Milan. But some bad passing gets it back to AC Milan. Tonali shoots. Yan Sommer gets it. So, funny story the audio got corrupted, and then there's 90 minutes. So, we're gonna play out extra time together. Alright, so corner for AC Milan. So let's see where it goes. And it's a header. And there goes AC Milan to store. Olivier Giroud stores in the 93rd minute, sadly, to make AC Milan actually go in and win the Copa Italia final. And AC Milan on another counterattack, actually. And Rebic stores another one against Inter Milan. A heartbreak of a match. So it is the final minutes of the match, and we only got one minute, and there's full time, and AC Milan win the Copa Italia. Now back to past Jacob. Also, I'm sorry I lied. We actually finished third in the Serie A, so I forgot to tell you that. So now, actually back to past Jacob. Alright, and it's time for season two. And there it goes, Andre Onana is finally gone after all of these years of struggles he's finally left Inter Milan for Everton 
And so our two big people leaving this summer is going to be Chalhunolu and Nicolo Barella. You know, we have to make the profit somewhere, and sadly, these two are some of our best center midfielders, and it's time for list it. Chalhunolu is in the prime of his career at 29, and he's played for both Milan, so he can see what's else out there, who else rivals he can play for. And we have Nicolo Barella, wonder kid, being linked with uh, some moves into Premier League with Newcastle and stuff. So we're going to trench list both of these people. And we have received an offer for Chalhunolu from Liverpool. We can get up to about $68 million, so let's try and do that. And they accept $65 million. And there goes Chalhunolu. Thankfully, I'll never have to say his name again. <laughs> And we have received an offer for Niccolo Barella from Manchester City. They're offering around $110 million, but it says we need $160 million. But then Real Madrid rejected that. So we're going to go and try and sell Barella for how much we can get. And we sell him for $136 million. And so for our Barella placement, we are going to sign Zielinski. From Napoli, he does look set like he's going to leave, and his contract is expiring, so we're only going to have to pay about $30 million, which, funny enough, is what we paid for for Tessi. So let's sign Zielinski. And we do actually sign Zielinski on a $30 million deal. He's not as his Barella, but he will be pretty good. So our next sign is going to be Edmund Tapsoba from Fiorentina. In real life, he does play for Bayer Leverkusen, and this is not a really realistic signing, but Fiorentina did not have a good outing last season, so let's try and sign Edmund Tapsoba. And we do sign Edmund Tapsoba on a $45 million deal. Alright, I think this is going to be the team that we are going to rock until January. A great team, actually, Tapsoba fits in very well, so does Zielinski. I mean, it's a great team. Uh, not many flaws with it. Sommer went up a rating at 34 years old. Uh, for Tessie, I'm a little bit worried about. But, you know, he will grow. He's still 23. So, not a bad team at all. So, let's go Sim until January. Also, this is our Champions League group. It's not a hard group at all, really. Real Betis and FC Porto might give us a little trouble. But we should top this group easily. Unlike Group H, the group of death. So it really hasn't been that crazy of a summer. We signed Tapsobo and Zielinski. It might be a crazy summer net season, though. I'm not sure. We might have a crazy January. But, um, not been crazy. We loaned out about an entire nation, but that's about it. Just between our two sellings of our center mids, we made a profit of $201 million. And we spent only about $75 million on Tapsoba and Zielinski. So, not a bad summer, just a little boring. So, time to sim until January. So, somehow we're on the verge of being knocked out from the Champions League. So, we have to beat... So, FC Porto number one has to beat Real Betis. Because for some reason, we lost to them twice. And we have to beat LAST by three goals. This is going to be difficult. I don't know why our Champions League group is this hard. Our team's great. Like, it is great. Let's see how we do against LASK. And we lose 2-0! We have 8 shots, 7 chances, and we can't store any of them. Why are Champions League groups this hard for Inter Milan? They did great in real life. And we're even super close to finishing bottom. We tied LAST. We almost didn't even get Europa League. <laughs> and the Serie A, it's not looking much better. We are only two points off the title, though. A very close title race, like, between, like, sixth and first. Only three points difference. So, it's not too bad there. Let's go check out the team. And the team's doing great. A lot of people improving. I don't know. We're definitely going to have to do some signings this summer and some sellings. Okay. I've been considering this for a while. It's not very realistic. But Variety is reaching the end of his career. He is Italian. He spent the first little bits of his career in Italy. Then moved to PSG for like his entire life. He might want to return to Italy. Is this realistic? No, not at all. But we do need an 87 in our team. Very badly. 
I was about other options like Locatelli. He's also a pretty good pick too. I mean, he's only gonna be about seventy million. But let's have some fun in this rebuild, and let's go sign Marco Verratti. And they accept sixty-five million dollars. And there we go. That short midfielder has joined our team, and he will definitely add a ton to our midfield. All right, and there is Marco Verratti. The team just got significantly better now. Vertessi will be on the bench and will be a super sub. I don't know where I can actually improve to make this team much better and still stay a little bit realistic. So, this might be our only sign. Let's go check out and see if we can sign anybody else. So, we are going to sell Denzel Dumfries. It's, it's a little bit interesting, because I think he's one of the best right wing backs in the world. But, he's kind of reaching the prime of his career. He's 27 years old. It's probably not very realistic that he's going to stay much longer. But, there's also another reason. Pedro Porro, the man who's probably going to join Tottenham in real life. But, he's going to be joining Inter Milan in this game of FIFA 23. He has a contract at spying, so he's only be costing about $56 million. He's only 24 and 85 rated. Another one of the best right wing backs in the world, I think. So let's sign Pedro Porro. And we sign him for $57.5 million. And we have received an offer for Denzel Dumfries from Manchester City. They are offering Calvin Phillips, but we don't really want him. Uh, Nicola Brella is actually at Manchester City, so maybe we can even reunite them. So let's go and try and sell Denzel Dumfries to Man City. And they accepted $54 million. Actually, almost as much as we spent on Pedro Porro. Alright, and here's one of the big desires against Juventus. Pedro Porro and Verratti are both in. Both teams are doing very good. Juventus have signed um, Neves from Wolves. So let's see how we do. I'm a little scared here. A 1-0 loss. So let's go sim until the end of the season. I don't think I'm going to show you the Europa League results. I might show you the semi and the final if we reach it. So let's do sim until the end of the season. Yeah, remember when I said something about the Europa League? Yeah, don't worry about it anymore. But we are in the semi-final of the Coppa Italia, so let's see how we do against Lazio. I'm not sure if this is a two-leg thing, but we just absolutely demolished them. 2-5. So, um, we're not going to win the Stadetto, and we're not going to win the Champions League nor Europa League. And Tremont might be unfitsable. Alright, so second leg against Lazio. Let's see how we do. A 1-0 win to the final. Which means we're going to be facing Juventus. Oh my goodness. We have to win this or I think we're sacked. <laughs> but it's now time for the Topo Italia final against Juventus. We're not going to watch it because I don't want this to be about like a 45 minute video of me just struggling. So we are going to just twitch sim it. Jan Sommer has went down one, sadly. Let's see how we do against Juventus in the Coppa Italia final. A 3-1 loss. We went into overtime. And Rafa stores at the 100th minute. And Frederico Chaisa stores at the 110th. Or Kaku stores at the 28th. Sad times. That means our manager rating is now 57. And that ends it there. We do finish third in the Serie A. Not a very good spot where Inter pretty much wanted us to do the treble. So, let's go check out the team. So, Lukaku was our top goal scorer with 55 goal contributions. Marcus Thurman right behind it with 25 goals and 9 assists. A great team, really. Pedro Porro. In only half the season, stored seven goals and three assists. So, great team, really. I don't think I could ask much better for these stats. I don't think we're going to get sacked. This actually might be a miracle here. I mean, we have runner-up in Coppa Italia, and we did terrible in the Champions League. <laughs> so, you know, interesting season. So, they told me they'd give me another season. Do I trust them with that? Absolutely not. Let's go on to season three.
right, so this is the team, and it's a great team for our final season of the rebuild. There's only three signs that I think I want to make. I want to replace DeVridge. He is 32 now. He's going to start downgrading soon. I also want to replace one of our strikers. I'm thinking Lukaku. He's also 31. And I think we need that elite striker in here. And, well, I don't want any more own goals. So, and our final signs actually will be a little bit surprising one. Our a center defensive mid. I was kind of stupid, and uh, I signed Cassie, who we had in the last rebuild from Tottenham. We also had Poro in the last rebuild, so that won't happen again. But we are going to sell Cassie for another center defensive mid, so let's get on with some signings. Alright, and we have received an offer for Romelu Lutaku from Barcelona. We can get up to $162 million dollars. For a 31-year-old, which is pretty crazy, actually. So let's try and do that. And they accepted $145 million. And the reason we did that is to bring back Lautaro Martinez. He's been away at Real Madrid for a while, but he's such a quality striker that we need. And I think it's time for homecomings. Homecomings don't usually go good in soccer, but I know this one will. So let's sign Lautaro Martinez. And they accepted $113 million. And here comes Lotaro Martinez for his Inter Milan second homecoming, or second coming. All of the fans are out there, and this is the quality striker we need to win not only the Serie A, but the Champions League. I didn't think we'd sell Zealand Steve, but I think we will to Manchester United. I didn't transfer this or anything, they just offered, because he is only 84 and he is 30 years old. But we can get up to about $65 million, so let's try and do that. And they set $60 million. And our net sign is going to be Vatinha. We have actually signed a couple PSG center midfielders, but PSG have about a million and a half players in general. So he's only going to cost us about $78 million. So let's try and do that. And we signed him for $69 million. All right, so we have received an offer for Sefton DeVridge from actually Manchester United, who signed our last player. We ended up to about $55 million. So let's try and do that. I don't mind selling to Man United, as long as someone's buying them. And they accepted $53 million. So our net sign is going to be Lissandro Martinez. It's not very realistic. I wish they linked him up with Lotaro Martinez and call him the Martinez brothers. They're both from Argentina, it works. But he only costs about $100 million, and Manchester United both have a day at Pupamitano, and now DeVridge from us. So it's only fair that we sign someone back from them. So let's sign Lissandro Martinez. And guess what? Manchester United have offered for Frank Cassie. <laughs> but, I mean, if we did $150 million for him, I'm not complaining. Alright, so we have received an offer from both Newcastle and Liverpool. So let's see if any of them will accept $150 million. Now, I know Saudi Arabia has that oil money, so let's see what they do. No, they won't, they won't budge. <laughs> And Newcastle United set $143 million. Not bad, not bad. We'll just reject Liverpool's. We know they can't match it. And there goes Frank Kessie to Newcastle United for $143 million. Finally, someone it set to near close to $150 million. The best possible deal was $165 million? They're lying to me. I'm just now realizing you can pause your cutscenes. By pressing spacebar, or the, the three line button right here. That's so cool to me. Our, in our first game of the season is going to be against Roma. Vertesi is filling in for that center defensive mid spot. But let's see how we do against Roma. Their team is looking pretty good. Man, that kind of stinks. And finally, for that center defensive mid spot, we are going to sign Lottatelli. He's not as good as Tessie, but we do kind of need a profit. So we are going to sign Manuel Lottatelli, and we only did him for about $75 million, so not too bad. And they accept $75 million. Alright, so it is deadline day, so you know what that means. Let's go check out our Champions League group. I don't really actually know why I associate those two, but it's not a bad Champions League group. But we did learn our lesson last season, so I don't know. But it's only Dortmund, Benfica, and Salzburg. So, not a bad group, but I'm still slightly terrified. Um, by the way, this is the team before we leave. Uh, the team's looking very good. 
only position I'm now worried about is goalkeeper. Sommer has went down one. But other than that, team looking great. Some people kind of mad, but it's alright. So this is the team. Also, before we do that, let's go check out this match against Juventus. Let's go see how we match up against them. A 1-1 draw. Alright, so it is January 1st, and we're only second in a lead, which I'm not mad about at all, really. One loss, six draws, and 11 wins. Not too bad at all. Wouldn't like six draws, but let's go check out the team. Alright, so this is the team, and it's an absolute crazy team. Martinez, an 89. Bastoni, a 90. The team is all pretty much upper 80s. I don't really know if I want to replace anybody. If I do, it'll probably be Vatinha or Sommer. Just Sommer is 36 now. And Vatinha is 24 and he still hasn't grown any, which is a little concerning. But let's go check out the stats. And Marcus Terman is leading with 11 goals and 5 assists. Surprisingly for Tessie behind it with 9 goals, 5 assists, and only 16 appearances. Lotaro has 8 goals, so... Not too bad, really. DeMarco's pretty much crushing it with seven assists. He's our top assister. Marco Verratti with six assists. Crazy team right now. And in the Champions League, we did top the group with 13 points. Bercy Dortmund right behind us with 12 points. And in the round of 16, we will be facing Galatasaray. So, not a bad pitch at all. I don't think I'd actually get much better at all. So, not looking too bad for Inter Milan. So we did make a profit of $410 million during the summer transfer window, and we spent around $346 million, which means we do have spending room of about $55 million if we want to sign anybody, plus if we sell anybody this January transfer window. So our next sign is going to be Diogo Costa. He's attracting a lot of attention in real life from teams like Manchester United, and his contract is also expiring, so it's going to be sort of realistic. So let's go in for Diogo Costa. And we sign him for $51 million. And so on the other side of the spectrum, we are going to try and re-sign Jan Sommer for maybe a rotational deal. If he doesn't accept that, then we're just going to sell him. And there we go. Goodbye, Jan Sommer. <laughs> I can't have you important. And Diogo Costa's first game against Genoa. Let's see how we do. A 3-0 win and a clean sheet. And he just keeps getting better and better. We just beat Juventus 2-0 with 61% of possession, 6 shots, 6 chances, compared to their 2 shots and 1 chance. And there goes Jan Sommer to Villarreal for $13 million. And so, checking out on our budget, we sold players for $429.7 million and bought players for $410 million. So we made a profit of about $19 million. So, not as much as we have over the past seasons, but we did still make a profit. Now time to send to the Champions League round of 16. Alright, so it is the first leg against Galatasaray, so let's see how we do. They do have Zaniolo from Roma, but it is a 2-1 win for Inter Milan. A little bit too close, though. I like it. Alright, so it is the semi-final against AC Milan in the Coppa Italia. I'm pretty sure this is the first leg, so let's see how we do. A 2-3 win. Alright, so second leg against Galatasaray. The team is looking absolutely crazy. I know I always say it, but it, it literally is. Um, but actually, Galatasaray's team is actually pretty good too, with Zaniolo, Torreira. So, not too bad. So, let's see how we do against them. A 2-2 draw, which sends us to the quarterfinals. Alright, so it is the first leg against Manchester United. So, let's see how we do... I'm a little scared about this one. It is a 2-0 win, though. Alright, so it is second leg against Manchester United at Old Trafford. We are playing against DeVry, so let's see how we do against them. A 2-1 win- a 2-1 loss, I mean, but we're still through on aggregate. On to the semifinals. Alright, so second leg against AC Milan in the Coppa Italia. So let's see how we do against them. Oh my goodness, a 3-0 loss. Well, we're out of the Copa Italia. <laughs> Alright, so the semi-final is against Real Madrid. So I'm very terrified. I think our teams do match up. Somewhat. So let's see how we do against them first leg at the Bernabeu. A 1-2 win! 
Not bad, not bad. I swear Celtic do so crazy in their Champions League. I swear every time we do a rebuild, Celtic is insane. They made it out of Group D. They then beat Bergamo Calcio or Atalanta. They then beat Borussia Dortmund. And they might even beat RB Leipzig. <laughs> Alright, it is second leg at the San Siro against Real Madrid. I'm very afraid Lotaro Martinez was out with a red card or suspension. Team wasn't great. I'm a little scared because we actually can't do another season. So let's see how we do against Real Madrid. Here's a 1-4 win. Or I mean a 1-4 loss. That's a little disappointing. Alright, so it is the end of the season and we finished second in the Serie A. Five points behind AC Milan, sadly. But one thing we can't be happy about is we built a monster of a team. It is an absolute crazy team. I'd love to see another season of this. Sadly, we have to end it here. But I think we have to be a little bit happy because the team's absolutely insane. And Inter Milan is super rich now. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we have $400 million that we haven't spent. <laughs> Our top goal scorer was Lotaro Martinez with 27 goals and 8 assists. Marcus Terman right behind him with 25 goals. DeMarco with a crazy season of 13 goals, 18 assists. So absolute crazy. Marco Verazzi had 10 assists. So I'm not too mad about this. Nothing to complain about. An absolute crazy season. So I hope you guys did enjoy the rebuild. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm sorry we didn't win. Maybe not even a trophy besides an EA Sports Super Cup. <laughs> but I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Please subscribe and leave a like. And comment down below which rebuild you think I should do next. And please turn on notifications so you can see when I do another rebuild. And I'll see you in the future.